continue the conversation at dannymorell.com backslash awaken you. Have you ever experienced heartbreak in your life? Have you ever experienced pain so deep that it, it hurts and quite frankly, you have a hard time letting go of it? Well, that's what this episode is going to be all about. I think this is going to be one for the ages. We've got the author of Eat, Pray, and Fuck My Life, Gabrielle <laughs> Stone, and a beautiful journey uh, called Fuck Off, I'm Healing. You know, you got to keep it real with them. <laughs> I, you know, I like that. So, Gabrielle, in 30 seconds, why should they listen? Um, you know, I have been a person in this life who has gone through the trauma, the heartbreak, and I have gotten to the other side of it all. There is a beautiful light at the end of the tunnel, and I promise it is worth getting there. You just have to hold on. It's so interesting you said that. I just had our Q&A with our, our audience, our community, and mm -hmm. Awaken You, and there was this beautiful woman there that, that – um, that I shared that exact message with probably mm -hmm. 20 minutes ago. I love it. So I think this is going to be a beautiful conversation. I love it. Let's do it. So talk to me. What, what happened? Well, God, that's such a loaded question. Um, so I guess we'll start with the condensed version of what the book is about. I was married for almost two years, found out my husband was having an affair with a 19-year-old for six months filed for divorce, left, and shortly after that, I met a man who was a pretty well-known actor in Hollywood, fell madly in love with each other, had this like whirlwind romance of meet my family, I'm gonna have babies with this person, like we're done. And he invited me on a month-long trip to Italy with him. 48 hours before we were getting on the plane, he told me he needed to go by himself and broke up with me. And I was absolutely devastated. This man broke my heart like my ex-husband never could have done. Oh my God. I feel that. Oh, it was like the worst of the worst height of the honeymoon, just like rub pulled out from under me. And I had a decision to make and that was either stay at home heartbroken or go travel Europe for a month by myself. So I took a backpack and I did six countries over the span of a month and I wrote my book about it. Okay. Hold on. Because you <laughs> see this, this is power. This is what power looks like. And this is what transmuting pain mm -hmm. into healing yep. looks like. And, and this is what I believe we're all here to do on this journey of life. So, I completely agree. So, so, so take me back for a second. Mm -hmm. um, take me back to, to the marriage. Mm -hmm. A lot of our listeners, um, I, I'd say 75% of our audience is women. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them ask us about this, yeah. you know, infidelity, this type of of, of um, these types of questions. Yeah. Uh, and I've been on the opposite side of it. Mm -hmm. I was the one that had the affair, yeah. right? So I want to hear from your perspective, like, what was that like? What did it feel like when it happened? And how, how did you get past it? How long did it take? Because yeah. that's a lot. So for me personally, in my marriage, I had been really unhappy for seven, eight months. Um, we were in therapy and I was doing everything I could to get back to a place of happiness. And I couldn't understand why it wasn't working, why I was doing all of the things and why he was doing none of the things. Obviously, when the affair came to light, it all started to make sense. But because of the unhappiness I had been feeling, I don't feel like I was really in love with my husband at the time. I loved him as a person. Um, but I wasn't in love. So when I found out about the affair and everything came to light, it was more of being betrayed and that like heartbreak and rage that I felt, but I wasn't heartbroken. I wasn't like, oh, this is devastating to my heart because I wasn't fully in love in that way. Mm. Um, the relationship after was the one that, you know, wrecked havoc on my heart. But through my healing journey, I've come to see that when I fell in love with the guy after, that was when I, I started to put some of the pieces together that I didn't realize were happening in my marriage. So let me get this straight. Yeah. He cheated on you with a 19-year-old. Yes. And multiple other women once the book came out that reached out to me. <laughs> so this guy was all along yeah. behaving in this fashion 
could that have been why you were unhappy all along and weren't in love? I think so, but this is we're gonna have to go back a little bit further to get into to this the deepness of this answer. So I lost my dad pretty traumatically when I was six years old. I walked in, found him dead on the floor from a heart attack. Um, that was my first experience of when I love someone, they leave. And really for me personally, when I love a man, they leave. Mm. Um, and at the core of when I love someone, they leave is fear of abandonment. So that became my story of like, Gabrielle has to work through fear of abandonment in this life. Um, I then lost my high school sweetheart in a car accident when I was 18. So that kind of reopened that wound and was like, oh, again, when I love someone, they leave. When I love a man, he dies or leaves fear of abandonment. That's really, that's really deep. Yeah, that was where it all began. So unconsciously, I was now walking through this world attracting people that's that right. were going to abandon me. That's right. Like my life is a blueprint to it. So I attracted my ex-husband who would abandon me in one of the most heinous ways possible. And the universe was like, okay, Gabrielle, are we ready to go heal this shit? And I right. was like, no, no, not, I'm good. I'm going to go yet. over here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what happens. Completely. That's what happens. Attracted the next man who, I mean, it's almost funny when you look at it, abandoned me two days before we were getting on this like grand adventure that he invited me on. And the universe was like, okay, are we ready to go heal this now? But do you know why that happened? I know you know now, but it happened because the universe was trying to send you all along the key to the healing, mm -hmm. but you just wouldn't listen. Yep. And this is a message for all of you. It's like, you can look back. I know you're going to share this, but you can look back on your past and like hold on to the hurt and the pain and the, and the hatred. Or you can try to understand that I think what Gabrielle is trying to tell you is what I've been trying to tell you all along. There's something within you mm -hmm. that hasn't been healed yet that is causing you to unconsciously attract the circumstances that you face in your 100%. life. 100%. So I was attracting all of these men that were playing out that abandonment fear in me. Uh, so my brain consciously was like, see, see, they abandon you, they abandon you. And it wasn't until I got sent on this crazy journey across the world by myself to go learn how to be by myself and heal myself that I was then able to attract people that wouldn't abandon me because I had to go heal that abandonment fear. So when people write into my show or, you know, readers from my book, they'll message me and they're like, why am I always getting cheated on? Why am I always attracting the narcissist? Why am I always ending up with the assholes? And it's like, is that your fault? Do you deserve that? No, of course not. But there is something within you if there is a pattern in your life in any capacity, whether it's the men you're dating, like the financial situations you're in, whatever you're experiencing a pattern in, you are subconsciously attracting that in some way. So until you go and fix and heal whatever that is, you're going to attract the assholes. You're going to attract the narcissists. You're going to keep getting cheated on. Again, not that you're deserving of this, but you have to like point the finger back at yourself and be like, okay, what is this trying to wake up at me to go heal so that I can attract better? Well, Gabrielle, it, it just goes back to like, frequency attracts frequency mm -hmm. like attracts like energy attracts energy and this is the beautiful part of the healing journey is when you finally realize that mm -hmm. right when you finally realize that then you get to take ownership yeah which is is hard for victim energy to do creator energy says hang on like if this keeps happening to me it's because there's something in me that maybe I don't realize it, by the way, but something in me keeps calling this into my life. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, you know, God bless my mom for teaching me at a really early age the difference between being a victim and letting it define you and making something that you've been through just part of your journey that you can then move forward from. It's impossible for you to have a successful relationship with another human being or a partner if you don't have a successful relationship with yourself. And what we as human beings don't realize is that we are deeply disconnected. We're disconnected from Mother Earth. We're disconnected from peace. We're disconnected from love. What we do at Awaken is we curate different exercises to help you reconnect first to yourself and then 
the beautiful process of reconnecting to everybody begins. And that's why Awaken is so powerful. You'll do more in three days at Awaken than you would do 30 years anywhere else. I was so stuck and now I feel peace. Awaken has been the best thing we have done for our marriage. Coming here, I realized that the answers were inside of me all the time. Head on over to dannymorell.com backslash awaken now to get your tickets today. I want to go into that trip. Yeah. And I, and I want to go into, okay, you felt the pain and the heartbreak. Um, and it's so interesting. I, I have to comment because this is what came to me. It's so interesting that the universe like had to make it an, uh, a ridiculously famous person, like probably like the dream board guy, right? For you to feel like, okay, time out. Something is obviously not right. Yeah. You know? So take me back to those moments where you decided I'm going on a trip and I'll tell you why this is important. So many people in our audience are afraid to travel. They're afraid mm. to do things on their own. Like we invite them to events and they, in their mind, they can't even see themselves like going places on their right. own. I think yeah. that's a big issue. Yeah. Right? Well, for me, you know, I was struggling with the fear of abandonment. So of course this, this situation that happened would be like, okay, so we're going to make her go across the world to be alone, like in the biggest way. I had never done a solo trip before. Um, I had heard about hostels. I was like, there's a movie. People get brutally murdered in it. What do you mean I'm going to go stay in hostels? Like, it was not my my thing. Um, but I got on the plane. I I was like, okay, we're going to do it. I, I, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. This was like to a T. Like, you couldn't argue like that this is what was going on in my life. And... I really quickly discovered on this trip how much I love being by myself. Um, it allowed me to meet myself in an entirely different way than I ever have before. You know, so often when we're, quote, by ourselves, we're scrolling on TikTok or watching Netflix or like we have 50 different things that are making us not really just with ourselves. Um, and solo travel is one of the best ways that you can get out of your comfort zone and rediscover so many things about yourself. And the biggest gift that I got from this trip, although there were so many, um, was that I'm never really abandoned because I'll never abandon myself. That's and that right. was huge for me. That's right. What was that moment like and how did that moment come to realization? It came gradually. It wasn't a all of a sudden I it clicked and made sense. It was the culmination of losing my father, losing my high school sweetheart, being cheated on in my marriage, having this man essentially kind of love bomb me and then bounce um, right before this trip and still standing there in my power on this trip being like, oh, I fucking did it. I'm here and I'm living and I've survived everything up until this point mm -hmm. because I'm here with myself. So then it became getting into a new relationship. It was, yeah, they might die. Yeah, they might leave. Yeah, they might cheat or lie, but I'm always going to be okay because I'm, I'm here with myself. Yeah. It might suck. It might be hard. It might be heartbreaking but I'm always going to be okay because I have myself. I'm curious, where did you go on the trip? So I started in London um, and then I went to Amsterdam, Paris. I'm trying to think of the order. Barcelona, Mykonos, Rome, and Sicily. Have you ever looked into ancestry and have you ever potentially seen where your lineage is from? I have not and I would be interested to see if any of those line up. Can I tell you why? Yes. Because our stories are parallel. Mm -hmm. And I feel that often what has to happen is we have to go back to our land mm. and go back to where we're from. Mm. And when we're on that land, codes unlock. Interesting. Spirits, uh, our angels, our ancestors. I, I can vividly remember what happened to me was um, through a psychic reading, my mother came to me and drew a map like this and said, you have to go 
here. And you're going to start from here and you're going to work your way up like this. Mm -hmm. And I was asking the psychic, like, what is that? And like, I don't know. I don't know. And when we looked at the map, it was the tip of, of South America going up in through Costa Rica, wow. that little portion of land. Yeah, yeah. And so I did a trip just like this. And on one portion of my trip, I, I took a horseback ride um, to the top of a mountain. And I literally felt my ancestors like come behind me. Mm. And um, I'm curious to see if. Yeah, I would be interested too. And I think, you know, especially in the spiritual space, I feel like sometimes there's this toxic positivity of everything happens for a reason. Mm. And I wholeheartedly believe that everything happens for a reason, but not in the way where you're just like, yeah, it's fine. Everything happens for it. No, you have to go through the shit. You have to really experience it. You have to heal it. You have to look for the lessons. Mm. Then everything happens for a reason. That's right. I was meant to go on this trip. I was meant to heal all of the parts within myself that I healed, that I had been carrying with me since I was a little girl. And I was meant to write this book um, the same way that when I came back from the trip and I shopped it to all these publishers, they were all like, mm, I think it's a little too racy or I don't think there's a big enough audience. I don't know. And I got all these no's and I ended up self-publishing it, cut to it going massively viral on TikTok and Beautiful. changing my entire life and being read by women and men around the world. I wouldn't have had that same experience if one of the big publishers would have taken that from me, taken a bunch of the royalties from it. Like, It's all really supposed to happen the way it is if you are honoring the journey and and walking the walk. That's right. Absolutely. I have to add one more thing to the trip that I, I feel like I want to share. It's like your lesson on your trip was I'm never alone mm -hmm. or I can, I can never be abandoned because I won't abandon myself. Mm -hmm. My lesson at that time was I was so attached to like my home. Yeah. And um, my ex-wife and the kids were about to move here to Austin and I had just built my dream home. And I was so attached to it. And what I learned on the last, on the trip was home is where I am. Yeah. So it was a big lesson. I love that. Yeah. I want to circle back to when you had asked me before about the being in love with my ex-husband. Um, and we went into the abandonment. Yeah. Um, so I had this really powerful discovery when I fell in love with the man after. And I was like, why was I why did I get married? Like, why did I go through with that if I wasn't fully in love with my ex-husband? And when I finally put it all together, it was like, well, Gabrielle, you loved your dad and he died and you loved your high school sweetheart and he died. So you married someone that you weren't fully in love with because it was safe. Subconsciously, deeply subconscious. Obviously, I wasn't walking down the aisle going, you're safe because I'm not really in love with you. But to realize like, the little girl in me was protecting myself, going, well, if I don't really fully love him, then he won't die on me and he'll be safe. Or if he does, it won't really matter to me. Right, which is so ironic to like call him safe with how things played out. But it was such a big aha moment for me in how deep what I had still been carrying from the loss of my father and the loss of my boyfriend, like, that really was screaming at me to be healed yeah. in a bigger way. So now you come back from the trip mm -hmm. and number one, you start writing a book. Well, I started writing the book the first day on the trip. I wrote oh. three fourths of it by hand in my journal Wow! on that trip. It like very much channeled, channeled through, through me because I've written multiple books now and I can tell you they don't come that fast. <laughs> no, no, because I'm writing one right now and yeah. it's, it's not, I find it very easy to do this, but yeah. doing this is, is kind of hard for mm -hmm. me. So if you've been listening to my podcast, you know I'm a strong believer and proponent of plant medicine's ability to awaken your mind, body, and soul. And many of you have asked me where I recommend going to experience the power of these medicines and the only place on planet Earth I would ever recommend is Reunion. It's a not-for-profit healing center with over 30 years of experience in Costa Rica, which I trust wholeheartedly. I'm honored to have aligned with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. So 
$100 from every booking from our community goes into this fund and we will award the fund to someone like you every couple of months. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when registering. The link to register can be found in the podcast notes or you can learn more by going to reunionexperience.org. So how did dating, relationships, men, how did all of that change once you healed that story? That's a really good question. Um, when I came back from Europe, I was in probably one of the biggest depressions I had been in in my life because all of this stuff had been happening. And then I went on this trip and I was meeting all these people. And like, I got, I came home and I stepped off the carousel and everything just stopped. And it was like, oh, okay, right. I'm 28. I'm living back at my mom's house and I'm getting a divorce. Like, that's where we're at. <laughs> um, and so it really, took a minute for me to pull myself out of that depression. Um, and it was interesting because I had done so much healing on the trip, even though I was feeling depressed, I was, my energy was attracting men at this point. I remember coming back being like, I'm so not healed. I'm still heartbroken. I'm still in love with my ex. And people were like, hi, I'd like to um, enter my name in the hat. And I was like, guys, I am so fucked up. Like nobody <laughs> wants to you come. Don't want, no, 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 no. Nobody <laughs> wants a ticket to the show right now. Yeah. Um, and once I released the first book, everybody, all of my, my readers that were reading was like, okay, but what happened after Europe? We need to know what happened. Um, so I wrote a sequel while I was kind of living through it. Um, and in that sequel is the story of how I attracted my now husband, who all my readers call my unicorn. Um, and he's amazing and wonderful. And we just welcomed a really adorable baby boy seven and a half months ago. Yeah. Um, and so that, that book is kind of me finishing the healing that I started on the trip and seeing how I was able to attract someone who would never abandon me. So I have to ask, why is he a unicorn? And and how did that whole how did it all happen? Um, it's it's really wild. So we had actually met, God, like ten years prior on a film shoot. We were um, acting opposite each other, and we had kept in touch over the years. Um, I obviously went and got married. He got married. He had a child. I got divorced. He got divorced. And when I came back from Europe, we ran into each other like randomly at a bar, and our stories are so oddly parallel. I obviously lost my dad when I was six, walked in and found him. He lost his mom when he was 14 and was the one that found her. So we have a oddly similar trauma in that experience um, that we've been able to, you know, relationships are such good mirrors, yeah. come together to heal so much of that. He's also 15 years older than me. So You're I know, just like me I know and Jen. I, like the we, we copy pasted <laughs> you guys. Um, we so I've had to rectify a lot of leftover subcon not subconscious. They're very conscious fears of you know losing him. Like I'm gonna lose my dad. There's a lot of triggers that that I had to work through to because he's older. Yeah, I remember for for Jen that was like wait a minute, when I'm 80, you're going to be 100. Right. And I'm like, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to get to 120. You'll get to 100. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll both go together. Yeah. Do. yeah. Yeah. It's it's scary, especially when you've lost a male figure in that, you know, capacity. capacity. But Gabrielle, also beautiful, because like the message I just got was like, it's like in order for you to really be open to love, you had to go into that fear again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, I hope you guys are getting this because like, yeah, I, it's, I, I, it's all very like obvious when you're looking at it, when you're looking at yeah. it. Right. It's like, that's what I saw. I saw, but of course he was going to be older because she, yeah. it's, it, it, it's like the universe brought you face to face with it's either you're going to live in fear, mm -hmm. which you have every right to do. Mm -hmm. You did. I do. So do you, if you're out there listening or here's your shot. Yeah. But you're going to have to let go of that story. 100%. And I know it's going to be scary and I know it's going to take courage, but this is the guy yeah. that is here to help you do that. I remember saying to my Fucking mom. Fucking powerful, man. I remember saying to my mom when we were kind of back and forth on if we were going to be together or not. And I was like, I'm just terrified that he's going to die. And she looked at me and she was like, 
Gabrielle, you could get hit by a bus tomorrow. Yeah. You're going to not spend 30, 40, 50, 60 years of happiness because of this fear that is completely unfounded. Found, yeah. Like, yeah. what? And yeah. it's like, yeah. The craziest part about my relationship with him is that when he came into my life, he had a daughter that was the same age I was when I lost my dad. Gabrielle. I know. The universe really went. I'm we are not going to let you, her ignore this. I'm telling you, it's like it's like me with my divorce and my 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 story with my ex-wife and my affair is mirror copy paste. Mm -hmm. Three boys, it was myself and three brothers. Mm -hmm. My dad had, it was, I had the affair. Mirror, copy and paste. Uh, we left New York to California when I was 13. Basically, they left to Austin mm. when my oldest was 13. Yeah. And, and, and what I saw it as um, was like I had a choice. I, I could choose to do what my dad did, which was stay out of our lives, mm -hmm. right? Or I could choose to heal the masculine energy or start the process of healing the masculine energy in my family, mm -hmm. in my entire lineage by saying like, I don't care if I just built the dream house. Like yeah. I'm, go I'm going for my kids, Yeah, you know? And I, I sacrificed it all because when I got here, like I had to give up that image of the beautiful home and all of that, but I didn't care. It was, it was yeah. for my boys. Yeah. You know? No, I totally get that. And sometimes the messages and the lessons come wrapped in a completely different box than you were expecting. Like if you ever told me you are going to meet someone that's 15 years older than you, he'll have a daughter from a previous marriage, like I would have been like, okay, no, no, yeah. no, that's not how we're, we're going to yeah. do this. Um, yeah. But it, it was exactly what I needed and he is the perfect person for me. But I would have never attracted him if I wouldn't have gone through all of the stuff and done the work and not sat in the victimness of, okay, I'm just gonna stay home and be sad and cry and not go on this trip because it's scary. I went and I did the work and I looked for the lessons. Like the more you can look in your life and in your experience, like you're a detective and be like, okay, this sucks and it hurts and it's shitty, but well, where are well, the that's, lessons? That's right. Then it gives it purpose. And it's like, okay, at least I'm going through it for something. That's right. And that's I would do it 10 times over to end up where I'm at now. Absolutely. So there's a lot of people out there that they hear you. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how powerful fear is. Fear is so powerful that I feel like, I feel this connection with you. And I feel like me and you are literally saying here. Yeah. Here it is. Here on a silver platter is 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 how you need to look at things, what you need to do. And I feel like fear is so fucking powerful, Gabrielle, that they're probably still sitting there like, but but well, what about me? But how do I do it? Yeah. Because because fear literally, and I made my head as fear has us walking around like damn zombies. Mm -hmm. Like we don't understand how powerful we really are. We don't understand how powerful life is, and we don't understand that. Life is trying to give us the very medicine that we need to heal ourselves. Yeah. So for those people that are out there, like, what's step one? Um, well, it's interesting that you say that. I, the majority of my readers, and I open every DM that I get because this book is so personal when they go on this journey with me. Every one of my readers was like, I didn't pick this up because it felt like a self-help book. Because it's, it's a self-help book at its core, but it's because you're reading about me going through these experiences and then you're relating to them. It's not like you're sitting down to read, this is how to fix your life and like heal yourself. Um, it's written like a Netflix story and you feel like you're sitting down and having a glass of wine with me and like going on this Europe trip. Um, but the things that I come to and realize in the book on this journey then are like, Oh, and people are having these like massive realizations as they're reading. I have this thing that I write about that I think you'll love in it called the thought onion. And it's kind of my way of looking at our thoughts in a very simplistic way to get to what's at the subconscious level. So you look at it like an onion and the first initial thought you have is your superficial thought. And that's like, your knee-jerk reaction, like what's your conscious mind thinking? It's usually judgy. It's usually like very superficial. 
And you're like, okay, what's underneath that? And that's the authentic thought where you can look at it and say, okay, this is the ouch spot that is causing that superficial thought. This is the emotion I'm having that's causing that initial reaction in the first place. And then you look underneath that and it's the subconscious thought. And when you can get to the subconscious thought, that's where the real like meat and potatoes is, where mm. you're like, oh, this is the trauma it stems from. This is the experience that I'm triggered by. And when you can get to that root of it, you can then change your thought patterns to have different thoughts or reactions in the future. Beautiful. And it's a really easy step-by-step -step way. And again, I'm not teaching them this in the book. I'm just like, this is what I'm going to do because I'm having a shitty reaction right now and I don't really want to have it anymore. Let's find out what the hell it's about. So that. they're reading my healing journey and getting the healing from it, but it doesn't feel so in your face. So to answer your question, I think that helps take some of the fear away because you're really just reading to be entertained, but you're also getting all the lessons from it. I love it. I heard so much in that. And I, I'm going to be honest with you about something. I, um, like I told you before we started filming, mm -hmm. I'm in the process of writing a book. Mm -hmm. The book is here. The yeah. first edit, the first draft is here. But what I don't like about it, it's like I, I hired somebody to help me write it. Mm -hmm. who, she's wonderful, but it just doesn't feel like my story or my words. Mm. So I'm now like the format, it's there, it's 35 chapters, but now I'm having to like go back in yeah. to like make it me. Right. And I love that you just said that because it was encouragement for me to yeah. just like just which is which is I think it's what I do on social media. Totally, I just I just share my story with people, yeah, and people really re resonate. But that's with that. what people love because yeah. they're able to connect with you and your journey, not the one, two, three steps of how to fix yourself. Yeah, because that's where the fear is when everybody's like this is how you fix yourself. You're like, okay, but there's a lot of shit in that closet. I'm not sure I'm ready to go there. But the work that you and I do, it's like, okay, we'll come into my closet. Yeah. Look through my stuff. That's right. Heal from that. That's absolutely true. Yeah. So how do people get the book? Um, so the book, because I self-published, is exclusively on Amazon. It's called Eat, Pray, FML, which obviously stands for Fuck My Life. It's a satirical play on the classic Eat, Pray, Love. I uh -huh. can assure you that is not the book you will be getting if you pick this up. Um, you can also get them signed by me on the website, which is eatprayfml.com. And the sequel, which is everything that happened after the trip, is called The Ridiculous Misadventures of a Single Girl. I love that. <laughs> Good for you. And how do people find out more about you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at Gabrielle Stone and TikTok at Gabrielle underscore Stone. And uh, eatprayfml.com is all the stuff. And you've done an episode of my podcast, FML Talk. It's very like shoot the shit therapy with- uh, We had fun on that episode. With some, with some F-bombs on it, you know. How do people watch that episode, by the um, way? You can just search um, FML Talk with Danny Morrell. It'll and it'll come pop up. up. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a good one. We had we had fun. We did have fun. <laughs> we did have fun. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And that's this week's episode of The Higher Self. Go get the books. Like I love, I love that you use the F bombs. Thank you. Because yeah. because even there's something there's healing in like our attachment to words. One hundred percent. You know, like why do you always have to drop an F bomb? Well, why does it matter? Right. Why does it bother you? Yeah, feel like, it. Go go in there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we'll see you next week on another episode of The Higher Self. Hey, friends. This week, we're going to do something new. You've been asking so many questions that we're going to start answering them on a weekly basis. So here's this week's question. I'm in a relationship with a person that I care and love. He loves me and takes care of me like nobody does. Our sexual life has been a disaster. I don't feel complete without that because my passion is important. It hurts me so much to end the relationship because I know he loves me, but I don't want to hurt him. He says everything, well, I know this is a lot, but, but there is a chance I might be wrong. He always says that I'm wrong and I reject him because I have to deal with my inner issues. In this case, is there any hope that we can be each other's real love? My answer is, what do you want? You got to get clear on what you want because your heart, your soul, your journey has attracted this confusion into your life for a reason. It sounds like you are easily persuaded by words. It sounds like he says the right things, but the actions are different. 
And quite frankly, if you don't have a great sexual life, it's because you're not connected. It's because there's disconnection. Because there's times in a relationship where maybe you don't have the time or the energy or whatever to have sex, but that doesn't bother you. It doesn't make you feel disconnected because sex is the pinnacle of the connection. But real connection happens in life. Real connection happens out here with your partner. And so my challenge to you is to ask yourself, what do you want? What do you want to feel like in a relationship? What do you want to feel like in partnership with another human being? Because the truth is the clearer you get on what you want, then you will understand what you will no longer accept. And then you will be able to communicate that through your power source with the universe first and with your current partner. And then he or she has the opportunity to also decide what they want. And if they want what you want, they'll be willing to work for it. They'll be willing to dissolve some of the parts of them that are keeping them from connecting with you. But not by their words, by their actions. Thank you for your question. We're going to be doing this every single week. And yet, if you want your questions answered live, we do this every week on Thursday afternoons inside of Awaken You. So go to dannymorell.com backslash Awaken You. Sign up and I'll see you inside.